On 1 January 2016, Sun Limited leased a machine to Moon Limited. Sun Limited used the machine in its manufacturing process. The lease agreement contains a lease in terms of IFRS 16. Moon Limited has a high credit rating. In terms of the lease agreement, we're as follows. Open market value of the machine at commencement of the lease is 340000 Installments payable annually in arrears is 120,010 Rand. Period of the lease, 5 years. Date of first payment, 31 December 20.16. Sun Limited incurred 15,000 Rand in legal fees to secure the lease agreement. Remember, Sun Limited in this example is the lesser. The legal fees are deductible for tax purposes. This is very important to us. The estimated use for life of the machine is five years with a residual value of zero. Moon Limited will take ownership of the machine at the end of the lease term at no additional cost. Therefore, we know for the right of use of the asset of Moon Limited, Moon Limited will depreciate this asset based on the five years. The machine was originally purchased on 1 November 20.15 for 350,000. Now we need to identify that the machine was leased out on 1 January 20.16, originally purchased on 1 November 20.15 for 350,000 and on 1 January 20.16 has a market value of 340,000. The income tax rate is 28% and a tax deduction is granted on the machine over five years on this straight line basis, a portion for part of the year. Why is this important to us? For our DFID tax calculation, we need to include our carrying amount and our tax base temporary difference and deferred tax. They indicate to us the deferred tax balance on 1 January 20.17 was 9787. Remember this is the deferred tax balance. Now guys, if you need to calculate your temporary difference, you need to use the 9787 divided by 28% and this balance is a deferred tax liability. Assume that the profit before tax of Sun Limited for the reporting periods ended 31 December 20.17 before taking the lease agreement into account was 550,000 respectively. Required, present and disclose the lease transaction and the annual financial statements of Sun Limited, remember this will be our lesser, for the reporting period ended 31 December 20.17. Your answer must comply with RFRS. Ignore VAT, cash flow statement and statement of changes in equity are not required. Comparative figures are not required and the accounting policy are not required. Now remember, we need to identify is this a finance lease or an operating lease based on the fact that risks and rewards should be transferred, then we know that this will be a finance lease. However, they have indicated to us in the example that this is a finance lease in the heading. Now my recommendation, let's first start with our template and include our template and then we will perform our calculations and transfer all of the calculations to our template. We need to present and disclose. Now remember the presentation is on the face of our statement of financial position as well as our statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. Now first we include our template. We know that this is a finance lease, therefore we need to include a heading non-current assets and include the net investment in the finance lease. 
a heading current assets and include the net investment in the finance lease. And guys, remember in this example, we have tax. Therefore, in our non-current liabilities, we need to disclose our deferred tax. And in our current liabilities, we need to remember our other payables, our tax creditor. Then our profit and loss statement, profit before tax and income tax expense, and then the notes. Now, when you look at the notes, we have a profit before tax note. Now, you need to remember, with a finance lease, when we sell the asset, we need to take out that asset from the records of the lesser. Now guys, very similar in our finance lease transaction, we will have to recognize a profit on the sale of the asset. But this transaction occurred in 20.16 and the requirement indicated that we need to include for 20.17 and not 20.16. Therefore, if you would have had to include for 20.16, you had to remember to include a possible profit or loss on the sale of the asset. But we only have to do this for 20.17. Now for 20.17, we need to disclose finance income being received and there will not be any depreciation. Why not? Because for accounting purposes, our lessee, the customer, shall recognize the right of use of the asset and therefore this will now be zero. Then as always, we need to include our income tax expense note, our property, plant and equipment. Guys, again, important to identify. We are required to include the 20.17 details. Now, I have included this for awareness purposes that you had to identify this if they wanted you to prepare the 20.16 notes. Okay. Now, the finance lease commenced on 1 January 20.16 and therefore for accounting purposes, this is the date when the asset was disposed of. Note number four, net investment in finance leases. You need to remember to include a reconciliation. You need to include your opening balance, new leases entered into, repayments of capital, if there's any lease modification, and your closing balance. Then, the maturity analysis of future finance lease installments receivable. Now guys, first you include your undiscount lease payments, the 120,010 rand, minus your unearned finance income. Guys, this is requirements as per RFRS 16. You need to study this and you need to know this. Note number five, categories of financial assets. Now, important to identify with this one, that this is an IFRA 7 disclosure that you need to know. Now, in terms of IFRA 7, you need to indicate that there's a non-current financial asset, and this is financial assets at amortized cost, which is the net investment in a finance lease. And there is current financial assets and this is net investment in a finance lease. You will identify that I have indicated with colors exactly where the amounts have been calculated. Then the credit risk in the financial asset. Remember, in the records of our lease, this is a finance lease. And this is an investment, therefore being an asset. And in terms of RFRA 7, there's a credit risk involved. Now, guys, you need to read. If they indicate to you that you need to prepare the notes, you need to remember RFRA 7. 
Okay, if they indicate to you in the please note section, you do not have to include IFRA 7, please don't waste your time. You need to indicate the maximum exposure to credit risk. Therefore, what is the maximum exposure that our lesser will be exposed to? Now, what does this actually mean, guys? If our lessee does not pay the outstanding amount, our lesser will lose the 250,837. Okay. Then, as always, your deferred tax note number six. Now let's move on to our calculations. Step number one, we need to calculate the interest rate implicit. Now guys, they've provided us with a term being five years. Our present value is the 340,000 plus the initial direct cost paid by the lesser. Payment amount is 120,010 rand. And if we had a future value, we had to include the guaranteed and unguaranteed residual value. Now, step number two, we need to calculate our unearned finance income. How do we do this? Remember, our gross investment will be the lease payments, therefore five times 120,010 rand, and this will be 650,000. Our unearned finance income will be the difference between our net investment and our gross investment. Our net investment is the present value being the 340,000 plus 15,000. And our unearned finance income will be 245050. Step number three. Prepare your amortization table. Again, guys, payment at the end of the year, so therefore in arrears. Remember, you need to be able to know the difference and identify the implication on your amortization table. Now, I have included our red line again, our year in 31 December 20.17 in our amortization table. Therefore, you need to be able to identify the total outstanding amount or the total net investment in our lessers records will be the 250837. Now, you will remember that this is the amount that we've disclosed in terms of IFRA 7, the maximum credit risk exposure. Now, guys, on your amortization table, you need to identify the interest for the current year was the 63087 and capital being repaid was the 56923 Now refer to your current tax. Profit before interest, before the lease provided to us was the 550000 and Finance income being received, 63087 as per our amortization table. Profit in the sale of the asset, guys, is zero, nothing. Why not? Because this occurred in 2016. Okay, now movement in our temporary difference as per our Deferred tax calculation, step number five. Remember, for tax purposes, our lesser is still the owner. But for accounting purposes, our lesser is not the owner. Therefore, this will be zero, the carrying amount. We will still have a tax base, but our carrying amount will be zero. Then we have a net investment in the finance lease and this will be the total amount at the end of 20.17 now remember guys tax base for an asset will be the amount that will be deductible in future 
Now, oh, guys, nothing. Okay, this is a receivable. Therefore, this will be received once it's recognized in our profit. Now, I want you to identify how to disclose the calculations in your notes. Therefore, please ensure that you have your calculations next to you. I am going to move between the notes and the calculations with you. Now, when you look at your statement of financial position, the non-current asset section, we have our net investment amount. Remember, this will be the long-term portion, the 182246, and our current assets will be the short-term capital portion, 68592. Now, when you refer to your amortization table, our short-term portion will be the 68592, and our long-term portion will be the 182246. Okay. Now, let's refer back to our statement of financial position. Guys, I'm pretty confident that you know your tax principles by now. I am going to move on to our profit before tax. Now, the finance income amount, you are able to reconcile to your amortization table. 6308. 6308. Income tax expense, I'm pretty confident that you should know this. The net investment in the finance lease, remember the reconciliation is an opening balance and we need to include our repayments of the capital and the closing balance should agree to our amortization table. Now, our closing balance is this yellow section, the 250837. The opening balance was the 307,760. Guys, pretty straightforward. Opening balance, repayments, closing balance. Then your undiscounted lease payments. This is the actual cash outflow minus the unearned finance income. Now you should be able to recon these amounts to your amortization table, 51,418. If you look at your interest column, guys, 51,418, 37,358, and 2,0,4,1,5. This agrees exactly to note 4.2. Then categories of financial assets, guys. You should be able to identify that this 182246 agrees to our previous note under 68592 to 20.18. Maximum exposure, 250,837.